everyone and welcome to BrickCats. Today I am featuring this beautiful B-Wing Starfighter designed and distributed by the talented designer Edge of Bricks. As always, I greatly appreciate it if you subscribe or give the video a like. Your support means more great mock reviews in the future. The B-Wing made its first appearance in the original trilogy in the Battle of Endor, and more scenes with the fighter were originally planned. However, the thin profile apparently made it very difficult to film with the technology at the time, so it's only on screen for a few seconds. Subsequent canon and Legends installments have filled out the story of the B-Wing. It was always very heavily armed, but constantly in need of repair, and the lack of an astromech droid along with the sheer number of systems on board made it very difficult to fly. In my reviews, I offer my opinions on aesthetics and model features, parts issues you might want to look out for, the build experience, the model's integrity, and I offer a conclusion on the model. If you're watching this, I assume you have bought the instructions or are interested in buying them, and I assume a basic level of familiarity with Brickling's ordering system. Lastly, my disclaimer on this and all my mark reviews is that I only use genuine LEGO bricks, and I always purchase the instructions for myself, for my own personal enjoyment, and in the hopes that my advice will make your experience more enjoyable and or less expensive. Wow, that sentence is really long. I gotta work on cutting that down. Edge of Bricks' B-Wing measures about 18 inches long, 12 inches wide with the S-foils in attack position, and 5.5 and inches wide of its widest point just under the engine assembly here. This size puts it well within the typical range of a minifigure scale model. The cockpit rotates freely 360 degrees, and it contains a nicely detailed interior with a control yoke and some screens, as well as a simple seat. And it has the cockpit mounted blaster cannons on the front here. Both sides of the neck gradually get wider, down to what I believe are representing the proton torpedo launchers with these two Technic pins here, a little hard to see, as well as the deflector shield generator pods. The engine block is a very nice mix of dark bluish gray and light bluish gray, and I really like the use of these flag pieces for the engine intake here, even if they are a little unstable if you bump them. And this whole assembly in the front here I thought was really clever, even though it's very simple. There's symmetric greebling on both sides of the engine block, and the engines themselves are Technic axles inset, inset into wheel pieces. I really like the look of these engines, although I do wish there was some easy way to put a trans orange cone or some other coloring indicating engine glow just to kind of make it feel a little more alive. The S-foils, like the rest of the ship, are a nice balance of smooth and studded surfaces. I do think that the shape is a little too thick, meaning I think it should be thinner at this end and about the same length up here, uh, but I think that would um, require use of some less common pieces and probably add costs, so this looks perfectly fine. The S-foils do actuate up and down independently by means of some Technic gears that you can see just inside here. And perhaps it's just luck of the draw, my S-foils tend to droop significantly. And on the stand, I did uh, jam a 1x4 technic, uh, sorry, 1x4 tile in here just to hold this um, upper wing in position. The wingtip cannons are missing the targeting laser off to the side, but otherwise they look really good. And these connect with a fingered hinge, so they do kind of rotate up and down if you accidentally bump them, but it's reasonably sturdy and it keeps it in place just fine. And I also like the inclusion of the dark bluish gray stripe here, as well as the curved leading edge of the wing. 
It's really nicely done, even though it's just simple with some 2x2 curved slopes. The lower hall is a sandwich-style construction reminiscent of the UCSB wing. Each uh, of these large assemblies here connect via snot to one another. And there's a nice amount of greebling and color variation here, and it doesn't make the lower hall look busy. The sensor array cutout is present, as are the three lights on the front here. And then the lower weapons pod again has that nice dark bluish gray stripe and a nice assortment of guns and sensors here. Not really a huge fan of how this one kind of flaps up and down, but that's just a product of the cliff and bar connection. These two on either side are uh, solidly in place while this is another fingered hinge. Again, not a big deal, but this can flex a bit. The orange circles you see are the stickers from set 75050. In my opinion, these look really good and they, they kind of complete the appearance of the model. And there actually should be another one on this wing, but I lost the other sticker. And I'll cover the stickers more in the parts section. Unfortunately, there's no stand included, and I was not able to find one, instructions for one on Rebrickable. A number of the comments on this mox page are asking about the stand, so there does not seem to be one from Edge of Bricks at this time. This is quite a shame, as the V-Wing looks really good in flight position as opposed to having it folded up like you see here. And there's also no landing gear, so you could just set this down on the table, but it just kind of flops. And to solve this problem, I made my own. This Technic contraption actually uses these hollow studs here, so I modified this section slightly. So it connects, holds at an angle, and this is where I was telling you that since this wing droops, I stick this 1x4 tile underneath to hold it up like that. So if the designer ever decides to revisit this model, I really hope he makes a stand for it, and I think that this is probably my only major criticism, even if it's not about the model itself. For a B-Wing that looks this good, I think you have to give people the means to display it in all its glory, and I know that Edge of Bricks would come up with a really awesome and probably very economical solution. Overall, this is a great looking B-Wing model. It's got good proportions, a polished exterior with a good balance between studded, smooth, and greebling and stays true to the source material. This model uses 231 elements and 1,457 pieces. The designer has marked some pieces in red, signifying they are hidden and can therefore be any color, which of course I am a huge fan of, but there were a couple more that I found substitutions for. The lone 1x3 Technic Axle in light bluish gray, Part 32523 in Step 1 is hidden and can be any color. One of the three 1x15 Technic Lift Arms in light bluish gray, Part 32278 in Step 4 is hidden and can be any color. And that is one of the long Technic Lift Arms that make up the kind of central Technic frame of this model. All four Technic Lift Arm Thin 1x5 with axle holes, part 11478 in light bluish gray, are nearly completely hidden and can be any color in my opinion. If you look really hard through the back near the engines, you can kind of catch a glimpse. It's really difficult to see on the camera here, but just trust me, they're really hard to see. Uh, a neutral color will definitely be fine, um, but I still think that you could use even a bright color and you wouldn't see it. All 17 brick modified 1x2 with studs on two sides, part 52107 in light bluish gray, are hidden and can be any color. These are used to provide connections for the outer hull assemblies in both the top and the bottom sections, while the last one is used right at the top of the ship as part of the cockpit construction. Same goes for the 10 brick modified 1x1 with studs on two sides opposite, part 47905 in light bluish gray, also contained down here. The 4 tan brick modified 1x1 with studs on two sides adjacent, part 26604, are used in the lower weapons pod. And you can just see them, if I can get this part off here. Here are two of them, the other two are in there somewhere. 
can't see them. Two of the four 2x10 plates in light bluish gray, part 3832 and step 137 for the wings are almost completely hidden, and the only place you can see them is right next to these lift arms here. A neutral color is definitely safe, but in my opinion no one is ever going to see that. Eight of the nine 2x2 two two inverted tiles in light bluish gray in step 139, and the 12 dark bluish gray inverted tiles in step 140, part 11203, can be a little bit expensive, and on these under the wings you could substitute the 2x2 two two plate in each color at the cost of some additional anti-studs. I do recommend keeping the 9th light bluish gray one, as that goes right here, it is very visible. Two of the 19 total light bluish gray 2x3 plates, part 3021 and step 146 are hidden and can be any color. Four of the five plate modified 2x2 by 2 by 2 thirds with studs on one side, part 99206 in light bluish gray and step 142 are nearly completely hidden and can be any color. They are used to connect these assemblies at the end of the cans, you can see them right here, to the wing. The model calls for several 3L, 5L, 6L, 7L, and 9L Technic axles, and any color for those will work. The 15 Technic brick 1x1 with hole in light bluish gray, part 6541, can be any color, as these are all used, again, down here in the sandwich assembly to connect the top and bottom holes to the Technic frame. The sticker sheet for set 75050 is currently around $10 in the US without shipping. I think there is an opportunity here to use the new 3x3 round tile, which unfortunately doesn't come in orange yet, but it does come in dark red, red, or medium nougat, and all of them would look really good in my opinion. And I think that if you bought those, you'd simply be able to connect them to these two tiles here, or, or sorry, these two studs here or here, so it would be slightly off-center in this tile, but I don't think anyone is really going to notice. Finally, while there's no single part that's particularly rare or expensive, you can likely get many of them cheaper directly from LEGO Bricks and Pieces. Shipping is a flat $2.95, or free if you place a large enough order, and I have found that prices typically range between 30-50% to less for brand new parts on the following types of pieces in this model. The instructions contain 237 steps, and each piece or assembly to be added in each step is colored pink. This is generally okay, but occasionally it can cause some momentary confusion as you're mostly working with grays, and it's not always obvious which color goes where. I found a few minor issues with the instructions, no, nothing that an experienced builder wouldn't be able to figure out, but for an otherwise excellent model these might cause a little bit of temporary frustration. In step 130, the two 2L pin with axle connectors appear in the subassembly, but do not appear in the box that show the parts you add in that step. These two pieces are already in place as of step 14, but they're shown from step 130 through 157, at which point they vanish in step 158, but then are shown again in step 159. And I assume this is probably an artifact of an early version with the instructions, but a little confusing nonetheless and these are used to connect the wings to this Technic assembly in here. Steps 164 to 178 cover the middle engine section, and the X2 indicator, uh, indicating that you do the assembly twice, is at the end of the subassembly instructions. I usually like this to be at the beginning so you can save a bit of time and perhaps avoid a repetitive subassembly by building them in parallel instead of in series. And similarly, uh, on these angled sections of the engine housing, I did run into a viewing angle problem in steps 179 and 180. In these steps, it's hard to see where the modified plate with bar goes, which eventually clips onto the frame. There are two clips in there, and that's how this is secured. So you only know when you got it wrong when you go to snap in the side panels, and from the viewing angle, it just looks like any other 1x2 tile. Those issues aside, it's a fun build and it comes together pretty quickly. I took about four hours going at my normal leisurely pace, and I spread this across a few nights.
As far as integrity goes, thanks to that long Technic backbone I was talking about, this model is really strong. And you can even hold it up by one end, all the way here. I don't like doing this, but it is possible. And since the wing is connected with Technic, you can also hold it up by one wing. And also, I don't know if this is on purpose or not, but this wing happens to be at exactly the center of gravity of this model, so the hull is basically parallel to the, the table here, which is pretty cool. Maybe Edge of Bricks is some kind of genius by doing that. Take out my tile here. Um, since the wings don't lock, they can flap around a bit when you're trying to swoosh this, but I think if you just support them with your fingers here, you know, the model very swishable. Nothing's going to fall off or come loose. It is rock solid. There's also not really any delicate parts to worry about. Uh, I mentioned the cannons kind of flex a little bit down here as well, but those are pretty common things for your th to break off, even on the official LEGO playsets. And even here, they don't really move that much. And in general, Edge of Bricks makes very, very sturdy mocks. And this is definitely no exception. So in conclusion, Edge of Bricks' B-Wing is a really excellent model. And while I've found a few things that I think could be optimized in terms of the parts list and the instructions, it's really impressive how the designer created this complicated shape, packed in so many play features, and made it much more stable than the average mock. And to top it all off, he avoided using any uncommon or very expensive pieces. Bricklink's algorithm was turning on average 4 to 5 stores at $178 to $189 before shipping and tax, with no part substitutions which is about $214 after shipping and tax. Like I mentioned, I think you could get that a bit lower by placing a bricks and pieces order for the more expensive parts. And if you've got a spare bin, odds are you've got some of the pieces already. Instructions for Edge of Bricks' B-Wing are available directly from the designer and cost €10.50, or about $12. US And a link to his Rubricable page will be in the description. Thanks as always for taking the time to watch my review. If you built this model, you have something to share that I left out, or have a question about something I didn't cover, please leave them below in the comments. Also please consider liking the video, subscribing to the channel, or following me on Instagram. I hope to see you back next time.